In this video, I have discussed the recent most guidelines by the National Neonatology Forum on surfactant replacement therapy given in December 2021, which is applicable from 2022 onwards. So a small revision about surfactant. It is a substance which reduces the surface tension, that is the interfacial tension between two interfaces, be it a liquid liquid or a gas gas or a liquid or a gas and a gas. So the deficiency of the substance which that is surfactant will lead to the collapse of the uh, system in which it is present, in this case the alveoli. The primary indication of surfactant is a baby having signs of respiratory distress syndrome in who is premature in the immediate perinatal period after a failed trial of CPAP or in babies having any contraindication to CPAP. We know the contraindications to CPAP are basically two. These are apnea and air leak. The dose of surfactant is calculated in terms of the phospholipid content of the surfactant. The phospholipid should be given at a rate of 100 mg per kg every 12 hourly for a maximum of three doses and can be given preferably as early as six hours if required to repeat the dose. It is given in aliquots of two to four allowing for recovery on mechanical ventilation between aliquots to minimize the endotracheal tube or large airways obstruction by the viscosity of the surfactant. Positional maneuvers which were used earlier are no longer recommended since this can lead to endotracheal tube malposition or accidental extubation. What we commonly use is the bovine lung surfactant which is referred to as Cervanta or Neosurf and the dose of which is 4 ml per kg which equates to around 100 mg per kg of phospholipids and it has to be divided in 2 to 4 aliquots while the patient is to be while the patient is being administered so as far as these guidelines are concerned the nnf clinical practice guidelines for babies who are born less than 28 weeks of gestational age there is no role of prophylactic surfactant this is very important and one must remember it by heart Selective surfactant therapy can be considered in babies less than 28 weeks gestational age with respiratory distress syndrome who are not stabilized on CPAP. So the initial modality in this age group also needs to be CPAP. So what are the signs of respiratory distress syndrome? Respiratory distress syndrome is respiratory distress seen in children babies who are less than 34 weeks of gestational age they develop soon after birth and are supported by x-ray findings the x-ray findings which are suggestive of respiratory distress syndrome per se are low lung volumes homogeneous microatelectasis giving the appearance of ground glass air bronchograms highlighted by surrounding microatelectasis I hope everyone knows what are air bronchograms. Sometimes the residents don't know and they feel shy in asking. Air bronchograms are actually air filled bronchi which specially appear to be dark on the x-ray compared with surrounding opacification which may appear to be grey or white. So besides respiratory distress syndrome, they can also be seen in conditions of pneumonia, alveolar edema, interstitial lung disease and pulmonary hemorrhage. There is a term referred to as delivery room surfactant. This is given in patients in the subgroup of babies less than 28 weeks gestational age who are intubated in the delivery room itself for severe RDS. In them you can consider prophylactic, not, this is not prophylactic, this is delivery room surfactant. Now for babies who are less than 34 weeks gestational age but beyond 28 weeks gestational age, Early ensure that is intubate, surfactant and extubate within two hours is recommended in established respiratory distress syndrome who satisfy the criteria for surfactant administration that which we had already seen in the previous one. I am talking about early, early that is within two hours of birth. The surfactant may also be needed in respiratory distress syndrome which is stabilized on CPAP but the requirements are PEEP of more than equal to 6 cm water and FiO2 of more than 0.3 to maintain SpO2 more than equal to 91 percent. 
so patients who are stabilized on CPAP but they have these requirements they also need to be administered surfactant therapy LISA LISA is least less invasive surfactant administration and this technique should be preferred over insure for administration of surfactant now less invasive surfactant administration uses a thin catheter into the trachea to deliver the surfactant compared with using an endotracheal tube in insure and other techniques during the procedure the advantage is that during the procedure the infant is breathing spontaneously while supported with continuous positive airway pressure so you don't need to disconnect the patient from ventilator or something of that sort no surfactant therapy is recommended in those who present with respiratory distress at a referral hospital beyond 72 hours of age whether or not they have been given surfactant initially or not early intratracheal corticosteroids may not be used as an adjunct to surfactant and this is important to remember also multiple doses of surfactant should be used in those infants who satisfy the predetermined criteria for additional surfactant doses and the predetermined criteria for additional surfactant doses are infants having respiratory distress syndrome who have persistent or recurrent oxygen and ventilatory requirements within the first 72 hours of life and the doses the multiple doses which need to be administered should be separated by an interval of at least 6 hours and not more than 3 doses are recommended as we had discussed earlier a higher threshold that is map or peep more than equal to 7 cm water and fio2 more than 0.4 may be used if we are considering a repeat dose of surfactant compared with more than equal to 6 and FiO2 more than equal to 0.3 if we are using it for the first time. A lower threshold for repeat doses can be used in patients who have concomitant perinatal asphyxia or sepsis along with respiratory distress syndrome. For infants less than 37 weeks of gestational age, early surfactant may be used in some who satisfy the criteria for surfactant therapy that is if I have to more than 0.4 peep more than 7 centimeters of water and laryngeal mask airway should not at all be used for surfactant installation outside the research context in, play in patients with respiratory distress syndrome we know that earlier surfactant used to be administered could be administered by laryngeal mask airway or even by nebulization but now later on it came via endotracheal tube but the recent most guidelines they stress on using a less invasive method for surfactant administration and that is by using a simple gastric tube inside the trachea other indications for surfactant therapy as per the nnf cpg are late preterm and term neonates with severe meconium aspiration syndrome requiring invasive ventilation with oxygenation index more than 15 and late preterm and term neonates with severe bacterial pneumonia requiring invasive ventilation with oxygenation index more than 15. So what is oxygenation index? I hope everyone knows but for revision sake it is a formula which is calculated by mean airway pressure into FiO2 divided by PaO2 into 100 where MAP is the mean airway pressure as we already know and it is not the mean arterial pressure sometimes the residents get confused as far as the resources regarding administration of surfactant therapy are concerned it is said that surfactant should be given in neonatal units with availability of CPAP machine and preferably also a backup ventilator so to summarize the NNF clinical practice guidelines 2021 which are the latest guidelines for administration of surfactant therapy Respiratory distress syndrome is basically seen in babies who are less than 34 weeks gestational age. They have signs of respiratory distress that is tachypnea, retractions, nasal flaring, grunting in the immediate perinatal period that is soon after birth and they are supported by positive x-ray findings. Coming on to the indications of surfactant, this, these are considered in two different gestational age groups. In babies who are born less than 34 weeks of gestational age, surfactant needs to be given only in established RDS not stabilized on CPAP or with contraindication to CPAP that is apnea or air leak 
and there is no role of prophylactic surfactant even in less than 28 weeks gestational age as was there previously. In the subgroup of babies who are delivered more than 34 weeks of gestational age, that is the late preterm and the term infants, surfactant is indicated in severe meconium aspiration syndrome or severe bacterial pneumonia on invasive ventilation with an oxygenation index more than 50 and sometimes RDS with surfactant criteria met that is FiO2 more than 0.4 and PEEP more than 7 cm of water. The technique which should be used for administration of surfactant is less, in, less invasive surfactant administration therapy should be preferred to ensure for administration of surfactant. So this summarizes the NNF guidelines. Thank you so much for a patient watching and please do share the knowledge. Thanks a lot.